welcome. I know it's been a hot minute since I've made a video. Um, I started a new job and it is amazing and I love it. It's in sales and marketing, but it has been sucking up a lot of the, the spare time I used to have to make these videos. Since it is the week of event registration, I thought I would make a quick video for you guys that shows my process of how to go through the event grid, um, how I coordinate my, with my friends, how to how I make my wish list, how I submit it. I mean, I submit it the same way everybody else does. And it can be a really daunting task if you have never experienced it before. And there's there's just a lot. And it can be really hard to figure out how to navigate and what to do. So this is just a really quick video to show you how I've been doing it for the last five or so years, how I go through the event grid and narrow things down, how I coordinate it with my friends, how to make it all visual so we all know what it is going on with everybody and uh, how to make my wish list, I think. So uh, let's just get into it. I'll just show you my process. All right, so I have my coffee. Step number one is go to your profile and make sure that you have a badge attached to your account. You need to have a badge in your account to be able to buy tickets for events at Gen Con. Specifically, you need a badge for the day that the event is on. So if you have a Saturday badge, it's gonna prevent you from buying tickets for Friday or any other day. So make sure that you have a badge that covers the date that you know you wanna book events for. So the next thing you need to do is you go to experience and you go to how to find events and then right at the very bottom, there is these files. Um, there is two versions of the event catalog I mean, they're going to give you the same thing, so it just depends on what you want. I am going to download the event catalog. I'm just going to download it straight to my uh, desktop. All right, it is downloading to my desktop. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different things in my Google Drive already. Let's go to conventions. Uh, oof, there's a bunch here. Uh, let's go to Gen Con. I already have different folders for different things that are happening, but I would call it Gen Con 2018. I'm going to call it test since I'm just showing you what I am doing. So we're in our Gen Con 2018 folder. You hit file upload, find the file, which is this thing right here. Open with Google Sheets is what we want here. There we go. There we go. We have the event grid. Uh, first thing I do, select the top column, uh, the top row, so all the columns, and hit this little filter button over here. It's going to make our life a whole lot easier. Great. So we've applied filters to the top row there. Super helpful. Um, down here, you can see it is called Basic Worksheet. We're going to rename that to Master Event File or something like that. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to add another sheet that says master event grid uh, schedule. And this is the best part. I may time lapse this, but we will see. I'm just making up some names for friends that I don't have. Okay, so imagine these are all the people that I know that are going. Okay, so I resize all the columns, uh, kind of like you can see here. All right, so here we are. We've just uh, got our rows here, and then we select... Okay, let's do the date next. So I've already kind of preset one. Here's this particular date. Enter any date that you think is, you know, just ahead of when your party is planning to arrive at Gen Con. Um, I don't, I'm usually really early because my husband Derek has to be in uh, Indy way before the convention starts. So we're going to arrive probably Saturday or Sunday. And then I would enter um, the next like date or time in line. Now highlight these two, go to here, go to more formats, date and time formats, and it gives you a ton of different options of how you might want to display the date and time on your sheet. I like this top one, it's nice and simple. Hit apply, the cat is shaking the table, I'm sorry. 
Then when you have your date and time format set up correctly, this little corner right here with the square, click on that and then drag it on down. Uh, I always drag it down way too much. Right now it's going until August, so that's fine. Um, then go ahead and highlight all of these rows. Right click, I like to resize them to, I think it was 50. Yep, that looks about right. If I highlight my whole sheet by pressing this corner right here, and then I like to make sure everything is centered this way, but also this way. I also make sure everything is bold. I go to freeze, and I freeze the first row, and I freeze the first column. That way, if I'm going through my sheet, everything will always remain where it should be. I assign a color to everybody. So I am usually yeah, pink, Derek can be blue, Dan can be yellow, Tom can be green, uh, Lisa will be red. And then Courtney, oh man, Courtney, what color are we gonna give you? Maybe, maybe orange? Okay, cool. Next thing you would do is you would hit that share button at the top and you would share this file and make it editable right over here using this button. Uh, the people you invite can edit and invite everybody that you just added to the top of that sheet or anybody who who you would like to be able to see your schedule or have access to this. The obvious things would get added first. So say, I arrive in Indy, and then everybody would put their arrive in Indies on here. Go to the zoo. Um, let me see, I go to Rocket Fizz, oh man, and then we go to the comic book store. And my friends can see this, and if they happen to be in town earlier as well, they can just drag across and be like, we're all going to go to Rocket Fizz that day, and we're all going to go to the comic book store, or something like that. We can set the sheet up to work in that way. One thing that I really like to do is this. So, uh, you highlight the column. This is my column. You go to Format and then Conditional Formatting. And this thing will pop up on the side. Uh, single color. So if cell is not empty, I would like it to go purple. And then I hit, and I would also like it to hit bold. Done. So every time there's a cell that is not empty on my Google Sheet, uh, in, in this particular column, it's going to make it a color. Um, something like that. It's super great. And I do that for everybody. I just go to format. I go to conditional formatting. I select that person's color, hit bold and done. I just do the, make it do the things that I want it to do. And one more thing before we really dig into the master event file is we're going to add one more sheet down here. And I'm going to rename that sheet to be shared events. Maybe I call it question mark. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter how that works out. We call this event and then be like, hey, I really, this year, I really want to try out Jenga and I add all these things. I want to try D&D, &D, all of that. And then you just keep adding to this list. This is like everybody adds a huge list of events that they want to try out this year. And then what happens is that all of us We'll be like, oh, Jenga, I love Jenga. I'll try Jenga with you. And then Dan might be like, I love, I love this. Um, um, uh, maybe Lisa wants to try this. Okay, so you just kind of work on your list like this. And you just keep adding like different games to it. But everybody in your group will be like, oh, cool. Yeah, sure, I'll do this event with you. For example, apparently my entire group wants to play Dominion. When you're creating your event schedule for Gen Con like this, you kind of have to weigh up a couple of different things. I think last year they had 19,000 events at Gen Con. So there's no way you're going to be able to do everything. And usually you've got to sacrifice something for something else. And you have to make that decision, which I'm always really bad at, of are you going to do the things you really have been excited to do and want to do? Or are you going to do the things with your friends because you want to spend time with your friends and that is your primary goal of Gen Con? And neither of those are bad. Like, I, either option is great. I have always chosen a somewhere in between and never quite hit a, a medium that I've been super happy in. So this year I'm going to try and uh, do, use this grid and do the events that everybody's most interested in. 
and that takes priority over other events that I think I might enjoy. I'd rather do a game that I'm not quite as jazzed about with my friends than doing a game that I'm really excited about without them. Master event file sheet gives us an idea of where people have already locked in things that cannot be moved, you know. Um, Saturday at 2 p.m. is the costume walk usually. And we all really particularly enjoy watching it. So <laughs> I know it's pink, it's because I haven't done conditional formatting all the way across, but that tells us that when we go through the major event grid file, that you know events that are around that time or overlap with that time, we're just not gonna be able to attend. So we have now set up the sheet the way we want it to work, pretty much. Okay, I think that we are now ready to whittle down the master event grid file. So let's do that. Master event file. Here it is. Uh, let's remove this conditional formatting thing. It is daunting. All right, step one. As I already told you, make it be filtered. Duh, duh, duh. Uh, I also like to do the same thing I did before. Uh, go to view and freeze the top line. To, I have some idea of what's happening. And then freeze the first column. So the first thing I do is I go to event type. That is the easiest way to kind of whittle down your sheet from like 14, 15,000 events to less. Because there's always going to, well, for most people there's categories of events that they don't, aren't 100% attached to. So for example, we've got all of these different types of events over here. Um, I don't play miniatures games. I do paint miniatures, which is the category of miniature hobby events, but I don't play them. So I clear all of these. That means it's going to filter out everything except for it's just going to show me non-historical miniatures. I hit OK. And these are all the non-historical miniatures events. Um, and what you can do is you can look at the title of the event. If you uh, double click on it, it'll kind of show you the full title. There's always a short description uh, right there. It shows the group that is running this particular game. It shows the event type, obviously, the game system. So this is the Star Wars Miniatures game. Uh, we've got the rules edition, which is like important for D&D &D and things like that. The minimum amount of players that they require for this event to be able to fire. The maximum that they're able to hold. So they're going to be selling 12 tickets for this pack particular event. Uh, start date and time is important for us because this is the information we need. Uh, well, really just the start time and the duration um, because that'll help us pad out our calendar. So this information is really important. But sometimes the cost is important for people. So this event is $6, for example. I, as mentioned previously, don't care about non-historical miniatures events. So I select the first one go all the way to the bottom and select the last one. I'm not going to play any non-historical miniatures events. So I right click. Personally, I just delete them. Okay, good. That's what you're left with. Don't be afraid. You didn't, <clears throat> you haven't deleted your entire event grid. You've just deleted uh, the historical minis. If you go down here now, each non-historical minis are no longer here because you've deleted all those events from your event grid. You can just go through the sheet that way. Um, and just delete the entire categories of, categories of things you don't care about. It is an easy way for me to get rid of a lot of events. Let's say there are categories you care about. How do you figure out what games you actually want to play in categories that you do care about? Let's go with the huge category of RPGs. So these are all the RPG events. How do you narrow down these thousands of events? It's it's almost impossible. The With RPGs, what I do, and th this varies from category to cat this varies from category to category there's event type which I've already said but I go with this category right here game system and I sort alphabetically so now all of this the games of the same type are together so if I know I don't want to play 7th C great delete it just get rid of it delete it delete it great and then you're just gonna keep going through until you find things that you actually you know, resonate with you. Maybe you're like, oh my god, Battle Lords, I've never heard of it. Give me some more information. You read about it. So you go through this, you delete things you, you know you don't care about, you leave things you're unsure about, and then you highlight things. Maybe this particular Call of Cthulhu game is the game that I want to play in. I'm going to highlight it in pink. You can absolutely just go through the Gen Con website like this and search for the events and that you may want to 
do and then there's ways of filtering like if you're like hey I want to search for dragons but only in the D&D section over here you can you can totally just use this grid to search that is how I did it my very first year of Gen Con this is the way I like to do it I highlight the things I want to go to I delete the things I don't want to go to for, for sure and then I end up eventually with a sheet um, that has been whittled down from 15,000 events probably to a thousand uh, and it's not that I want to go to a thousand individual events, it's that I've left in, say, all escape rooms, and there's probably like 500 different escape room events at Gen Con this year, so I've left them all just because I'm not sure exactly which escape room I want to do, I just know I want to do one. Eventually I'm kind of left with a sheet like this where I've whittled everything down, I've highlighted the things I do want to go to, I have highlighted things in a particular color that are locked in and I'm absolutely doing, and then there's also like this area of events that I'm kind of interested in and I just need to look up, right? What is, uh, what is Nyctophobia? What is Fireball Island? And I would go and I would Google them and I would do some research and make a decision if I cared about those or not. So for example, I am going to play The Kids Are Alright. I'm going to copy the title here. I'm going to go across to over here. The event is on the 2nd at 12 p.m. for three hours. So I go to the 2nd, I go to 12 p.m., I name, enter the title that I just copied and it's three hours long. So I go one, two, three, and I merge those fields together. I go back to my master file, and the other thing that I want is the code for the event, that way, I want the code for the event so that if anything gets lost, you know, the code is a very easy way to find the event again. Let me see what else I need. Um, I probably want to know that it's Call of Cthulhu. So I go back into my sheet. I enter that it's Call of Cthulhu on another line, on another line. And then I go back to here. And the last thing I want is where, where is this event? Looks like it is ICC 144HQ is the location for this event. So ICC 144HQ. I don't know why it's not making that pink. That sucks. So now, oh, and see the way it's kind of going over the edges on either side. If you select that field, go to, go to format, uh, text wrapping, hit wrap, then it'll like spread it out in a way that is more visible. Also, I like to put borders around mine. You know, see the little black border? I think it looks a little prettier. And that's how I do it. I just start adding things. Once I've added them to this little master list over here, I, I highlight it in the color of whatever. I added it, so now it's this color. So eventually, as you whittle things down and reduce things, you can be like, okay, I've added all of these events to like my schedule. These are the primary events that I want to do. And then you'll be left with some events at the end that are not highlighted because they couldn't make it on the sheet because they're overlapping or they're happening at the same time. Those are still valuable to have on your list because you can still attempt to get tickets for them because if event number one on your schedule falls through and you just can't get a ticket for it, um, add the other ones to your wish list. And if you can't get tickets for one, you might be able to get lucky and get an event for ticket for the other. Eventually your schedule ends up looking something like that. You know, there's a lot of overlapping events that we all want to do together, some not so much. Once you have hit this kind of point in your sheet, add them to your wish list. So you go back to the sheet to create your wish list. Actually, you may want to go back to this one if you've whittled it down enough, but adding items to your wish list is super easy. So I just copy the type the the tag for the event. I go to the Gen Con website, I search for that. Apparently I want to do this particular kids Cthulhu event. I click on it and here's the full listing for the event on the Gen Con website. Something that they're doing different this year, usually they go for like um, paper tickets, they're printed out. Uh, some events this year will be digital that you have like on your device. It's a new thing that they're testing out for the first time this year, but for now most tickets are going to be paper. You can get a ticket for everybody. You can get a ticket for just yourself. You can get another ticket for yourself. So what, what I do is I look at this. So I want to do Cthulhu. 
But I also know Dan, Tom, and Lisa want to play this game, right? Because I know there's three other people that want to play this particular event, I'm going to buy tickets for those people as well. You want to make sure your wish list is done and completed before registration goes live. We can go to the wish list. See right here? Right now, this event is down here, but there's a countdown. Currently, we have two hours, the two days and 22 hours left to make our wish list. As soon as that countdown ends, this button right down here goes live. And there are gonna be tens of thousands of people waiting for that button to go live and pressing it. And as you can see, that Call of Cthulhu event that we just added to our, our schedule down here, it's suddenly got 18 tickets and 18,000 people are you know tr gonna try and get tickets for things. So there are chances that a lot of the events you want are gonna sell out. What happens is what, once you hit that submit wish list button, it's gonna load perpetually for a really long time. Eventually, it is going to give you a queue number. So it'll be like, you are number 3,000 in the line. That means 3,000 people's wish lists are ahead of yours. And the system is just gonna systematically go through every single person's wish list and assign them events. It's gonna go down the list and check do you want, and it goes from top to bottom of your wish list. So the order of items in your wish list actually matters if they overlap. If they don't overlap, it doesn't matter. But if they do, it's gonna allocate you tickets based on the first thing on your wish list. So if I really wanted to do D&D at the same time of Cthulhu, I need to make sure, or like I wanna do one or the other, but D&D is more important. I gotta make sure that D&D is at the top of my wish list down here, priority. Um, currently there's only one thing on my list, but I wanna make sure it's priority one, because if uh, I had Cthulhu as one, if there's tickets for Cthulhu, it's gonna give me the tickets for Cthulhu and cancel my request for D&D tickets because they're at the same time. So the order of your wish list matters. You wanna make sure that you press that button at the same time as everybody else does right at registration. However, if you're not too attached to the events that you're doing, I guess you don't have to do that. It's also important to mention that Gen Con is about friendship and it's about playing games and it's about getting excited about the things you love. and things happen websites crash um, events get cancelled sometimes there are weird bugs sometimes you just don't get a good place in the queue and you may not get any of the events you cared about it's important to remember that you do not have a ticket for an event unless you have a ticket for an event so even you know if there's an item in your wish list don't get too attached to it it's it's hard i know i've been there but you don't have a ticket to the event until you have a ticket. So there's no point getting super attached to to some of the events you have and getting really upset if you didn't get them because <laughs> 60,000 other people going to Gen Con that also wanted that and some people got it and some people didn't. There are, I, I guarantee you that if you came to Gen Con with zero tickets purchased and you go to Gen Con and buy a bunch of generic tickets, which are tickets valued at $2 each, uh, that you can just show up at an event and hand in as a regular ticket. Even if you bought nothing, if you got zero things out of this wish list thing, there are still tons of things for you to do. There's places that only accept generic, so you can do battle tech pods. There's hallway entertainment. Events never completely sell out at Gen Con. I'd say out of 10 people for an event, you know, probably seven show up. You know, people, it's Gen Con, there's fun things to do. People drop and there are no shows to events all the time. So have generics. If there's an event you're passionate about that you didn't get tickets for, show up with generics. Also, Gen Con is constantly adding new events to this event grid all of the time leading up to Gen Con. I think right now they have like, what, 13, 14,000 events in their grid. They're probably going to end up with 19 to 20,000 like they did last year. So there are like... 6,000 events that aren't even in there yet. So make sure you continue to check it. But what I wanted to mention about this, as you saw, is that I can buy tickets for other people. And Eric, for example, right here, can add the same event to his schedule, add a ticket for himself and other people. And the neat thing is, is that we're all gonna have a different queue in the wish list, and whoever's queue is first, that person ends up grabbing these tickets and they're going to be removed from my cart because I already have a ticket in the system, it's just in Eric's checkout um, screen. We can all go for the same ticket and whoever happens to be first in the queue actually ends up getting them and then we can make sure we figure out distribution later on. So that's about it. Everybody will have access to the schedule at Gen Con itself. 
um, we can figure out when to get dinner, when to have breaks, when we all have time to just like wander around the exhibitor hall together. I'm also thinking about setting aside time every day, like say every day from 7 to 8 p.m. I set up somewhere in one of the board game halls with, with some board games and a you guys are welcome to come join me and play co-op board games with me. I don't know if you guys are interested in playing board games with me, but if you are, please let me know. You can comment below or you can get me on Twitter. I am, uh, yes, I like pie on Twitter, so you guys can just tweet at me. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have questions or need me to clarify anything, please ask me in the comments. Okay, bye!